Let's turn to the defense attorney, Bob Bianchi, also a former prosecutor who worked in the Homeland Security Division in Morris County, New Jersey, and he spent years litigating civil rights issues. The court made clear, Bob, this is not about the policy at all. They, they made clear that this was about presidential powers. Your thoughts? Right. The presidential powers have been enshrined in the Constitution from the inception of the Founding Fathers. Not to mention that Congress ceded its power, Shep, to uh, the president in 8 U.S.C. United States Code 1182F. It's a little technical there, but it deals with the president's ability to be able to stop people from coming into this country who are not citizens, how he stops them, when he stops them, and why he stops them. An incredible amount of power is given to the president because there's imminent national security concerns whether it's a democrat president or republican doesn't make a difference and and on the matter of policy that the supreme court did not delve into that area to you is perfectly on point or something else that they didn't delve into the area of this policy. Poli the yeah, policy absolutely, itself. because once you start to do that, you're down a slippery slope. What the Chief Justice said is so long as there's a rational basis, this is a legal term. In other words, if the presidential authority is solid in the law, even if there's a discriminat discriminatory intent to that law, if you can find a rational basis for it, i.e. national security, then it's okay. And then he listed a number of things where the president and the administration actually tried to tailor and limit. It's only 8% of the Muslim countries. There are countries, I could tell you as a homeland security person, that don't have proper vetting processes, that represent a danger to the community, that from previous administrations, Congress itself and intelligence security people said represent a danger. So, as you can see, uh, actually, Shepard, I find interesting, and the Supreme Court did as well, there were a couple of countries taken off that list when they finally came into compliance with vetting people coming into the country. It's a very legitimate security concern. All right. So so that's that matter. Now we have breaking news. And this just into Fox News Channel, 17 states and the District of Columbia are suing the Trump administration over separation of families at the border, specifically trying to force the Trump administration to reunite those families who have been separated due to his zero tolerance policy, which is now at least on hold. Part of the writing here, by tearing children away from their parents and sending them hundreds of miles away, the Trump administration has already caused unfathomable trauma to these children while undermining New York's fundamental interests in protecting their health, safety, and well-being. That from the New York Attorney General. And further, one other quote that I wanted to give you here, quoting here from the, from the uh, Western District of Washington, keeping children separating from their parents is inhumane, unconscionable, and illegal, and we're filing suit to stop it. Do they have standing? I do. They definitely have standing. And I think it's a legitimate suit. It needs to be addressed by the courts here. Now, they're gonna, everybody's going to point to the fact, well, other administrations did it too. But two wrong chefs don't make a right. And what's happening with these kids being separated, some don't even know where their parents are. There doesn't seem to be a great tracking system, is a legitimate societal concern, especially since it's our people that are doing this as these people are coming over here. A little bit different than the issue we're dealing with Certainly national foreigners that don't have any standing, have no consequences constitutional rights here. So I think it's a legitimate case for them to bring. One of the matters in question here is that some of these, at least some of them, have come to the United States to seek asylum. Yeah. Uh, in the triangle in Central and South America, there's, there's extreme upheaval and extreme violence. The United States has traditionally accepted people on matters of asylum for safety. These children separated from their parents, and in some cases they're not able to communicate, it's our understanding, with each other, and certainly questions about how they'll be brought together. But overriding all of that, that the government would do this of, by, and for the people, but not show the people what they've done. Very carefully keeping the, the media who inform the people away from these facilities. Yeah, I think this lack of transparency is with respect to the media and the, the con 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 congressmen and the senators yeah. that are trying to do their rightful duty to investigate is problematic. If you have nothing to hide, you hide nothing. But, you know, let's take the decision that happened today. One of the reasons the Supreme Court justice did what he did was because he said that they are trying to make sure that people are not uh, abused in the process, that there's a certain uh, level of due process that's involved. And in fact, they can seek asylum them, themselves. So why wouldn't we allow these people to seek asylum, at least make applications? But moreover, how do we have the heartless idea of separating children from parents and not even know if we can repatriate them? More from the suit. And again, this is just in. Staff at one voluntary agency in the state of New York have informed local gov government officials, again, I'm reading from the suit, that the ages of most children newly placed in the agency, 
many of whom were separated from their families at the border, are between the ages of 4 and 12. And the youngest child so far was a nine-month-old baby, mm. in addition to multiple not-yet-verbal toddlers. Not-yet-verbal meaning they can't even tell those who are keeping them their parents' names. Yeah, and this is a huge difference, right? An adult that has the ability to have capacity to make decisions is one thing. But when you have children that can't even speak or defend themselves, I think Americans in general would agree, let's give these kids an opportunity to at least be heard, and that's going to be done via these lawsuits that are being filed right now. The, reading more now, again, this is just in, the children whom the Trump administration have separated from their parents and sent to New York are suffering extreme trauma. For example, it reads here, a South American boy who was separated from his father at the Mexican border was rushed to the hospital because he was about to jump out of a second story window of the group home where he was sent in early June after being forcibly separated from his family. The distraught child verbalized that he wanted to jump because he missed his family. Twelve other young immigrant children who were separated from their parents at the border have been treated for physical or mental illness in New York City hospitals. One child was suicidal and other were treated for depression and anxiety. A lawsuit by 17 states and the district against the Trump administration seeking, among other things, for them to put these families back together. Bob Bianchi, thank you. Pleasure. The